Welcome back to Learning to Code with Python, Lesson 9. Today we're going to walk through how we would make another simple game, but one that's a bit more interesting than guessing numbers. Rock, paper, scissors. Alright, let's go to the blackboard and write down what we need to do. Well, we have two players, right? We have the human, and we have the computer. So what are the steps of the game? Well, first, we can ask the player to choose a move. Okay? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to define the moves to be rock, paper, scissors. So we'll just use R, P, and S. That way the player doesn't have to type out the word scissors when they make their move. Okay, next we can get the computer's move. And that should just be a random choice out of the moves list. Right? So that's pretty straightforward. But now we need to compare the two moves to see what the result of the game is. Well, let's think about the possibilities. We can write out all the possible outcomes like this. We'll write the player's moves across the top like this. So this is player one. And then along the side, we'll write out the computer's moves. So what happens? Well, if they're the same, then we know that's a tie, right? Paper versus rock means the player wins. Scissors versus rock, the player loses. Rock versus paper. Scissors versus paper. Rock versus scissors. And paper versus scissors. So we have nine possible outcomes for the game. Three wins, three losses, and three ties. So for the third step in our game, where we compare the moves, we have a similar situation to our number guessing game, where we had three possible outcomes. You guessed too high, you guessed too low, or you guessed right. So let's tell the computer what it needs to do to compare. Well first, let's do the easiest one. Tie. Was it a tie? Well we can just check and see, did the player pick the same one as the computer? And for step two, let's find out, did, we, did the player win? Well how are we going to tell that? Well the player won if it was one of these combinations. So we can say the player wins if it's one of these choices. P versus R, S versus P, or R versus S, right? Because we're just writing player one first and player two second. And if it wasn't one of those, and it wasn't a tie, then the only thing left is they lost. So let's write some code. OK, so first let's go ahead and import random. because so we're going to want the computer to be able to make a random move, so we'll need that. And then let's go ahead and define those moves that we talked about. So the moves that you can make are either R, P, or S. And while we're defining lists, why don't we make a list out of these player wins? And we'll just call it player wins. And player wins is PR, SP, RS. Okay. So that's good enough for setup. What's the first step of our game? Remember here we had player move. So we need to get the player's move. Well, we can use the input command for that. Player move equals input your move. Step two is to get the computer move. And we want the computer move to be a random choice out of the list. And the command for that, random.choice, just like when we were doing random colors, random choice of moves. Okay, now we have a player move and a computer move, and we can start on the compare part of the game. And if we look back over here in our sketch, the first thing we wanted to try was to see if it was a tie. Well, to compare the two moves, we just want to say if player move equals computer move. And don't forget, we need to use these double equals because one equals means define a variable, right? Take some bit of data and store it in the variable that's named on the left. Two equals means compare these two things and tell me, true or false, 
are they the same? Well, if they are the same, then let's go ahead and print tie. This is probably a good time to try running our program just so we can make sure we haven't made any mistakes so far. So I'm going to run this program. I'm going to try choosing rock. Ah, what happened? Well, obviously we didn't get a tie because it didn't print out tie. But we don't know what happened. So we've kind of spotted a problem in our program. We left out a step. We should probably print out what the moves are before we tell the result. Let's add some print statements so we can see what's going on. So we'll say the player move, and we'll say the computer move. And the computer can call itself me, since it's the one that's doing the talking. Let's try that and see how that looks. So I'll pick R. OK, so it wasn't a tie. But at least we know the computer picked scissors this time. Now we want to check the second option. Did the player win? So we want to know, did we get one of these combinations? So over here, I'm just going to show you a little example. Remember, if we picked R and the computer picked S, then adding two strings together just gives you a string where they're stuck together. So we should just add the player move to the computer move so that we get a single string, and then we can check and see if it's one of these. So let's say player move plus computer move. Now, how do we tell if it's one of these? Well, Python has a handy little command called in. So if we say the player wins. So if we say, add these two together and tell me if it's in this list. So in this example, if we chose R and the computer chose S, then R plus S is RS. And is RS in this list? Well, yes, it is. So it should print, you win. And last but not least, if it wasn't a tie and it wasn't a win, then we can just print out you lose. Or we could say I win, but either way. You can even, if you want, make the computer a little mean and have it say things like you lose sucker, things like that. I'll leave that up to you. Let's just go ahead and make sure that our program is working. All right, I'm going to pick scissors for a change this time. Ah, uh, we tied. Now we're done. The program ended, right? So if we want to play again, we actually have to run it again. Ah, I keep getting ties. Let's try again. Wow, three ties in a row. What are the odds? There we go. I picked paper. He picked rock. I won. OK, just like our number guessing program, we'd like to be able to play more than once. In fact, I'd like to be able to play until I decide I'm finished. So I really want all of this stuff to be in a loop, right? I want this to go over and over again until I want it to stop. Well, to start with, let's just make it repeat. Then we'll worry about stopping it after that. Remember, we have the while loop, like we used in our number guessing game. But I want this loop to go forever. I just want it to never stop, just keep going. So I can just say while true. Remember, the while loop continues as long as whatever comes after the while is true. And true will always be true. So this is what's called an infinite loop. I'm going to indent this so that it's part of the loop. Remember, we highlight everything and press tab. So now while true, do this forever. We'll run it. Now we can play over and over again. So if we have an infinite loop, how do we stop it? Well, let's give the player a way to quit. Let's add after player move here that if the player move, if they choose Q for quit, then that's when we want this while loop to stop. But we can use a new command for that. We can say break. 
break is a special Python command that says whatever loop you're inside of, end it. No matter what else is going on, just stop the loop. So Q will let us play as long as we want until we type it, and then it will stop the loop. Let's see how that looks. All right, I'm going to pick rock a bunch of times, and then when I decided I'm done, I pick Q and the program ends. Now there are a few more things we could add to this program, but I'm going to leave that for you to figure out. One is we could add a score, just like we did in our number guessing game, right? But this time you need two variables because you need a score for the player and you need a score for the computer. And make sure you start them out at zero and you're going to give them a point at the appropriate spot. So when the player wins, you should, right after you say you win, you should add a point to the player's score. And when the computer wins, you should add a point to the computer score. And don't forget, at the end, after the loop has ended, so down here somewhere, you can print out what the final scores were, so the players can see who did the best. Another thing that you could add is you could make the computer a little more challenging. Right now, the computer is purely random. It's just randomly picking one of these moves. If you really wanted to be mean, instead of making a random choice here, you could say if player move equals R, computer move equals P. Then whenever the player picks rock, the computer will always pick paper. Now it might take the player a few times playing before they figure that out, and then they'll be angry with you, but until then, your computer will somehow always win. You can try that one out on your parents. Well, that's about it for our Rock, Paper, Scissors game. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.